Good afternoon, members of the public and members of this council. Welcome and thank you for joining today's National Women's Business Council public meeting. My name is Tanae Dolphin and I serve as the executive director and as the designated federal officer of this dynamic all-volunteer woman-led council. I call this public meeting to order. The National Women's Business Council remained very busy despite the continued transition over the past year. Many of our council members fulfilled their terms this past year, often working, sharing, and leading up to their very last day. We are incredibly grateful for their commitment. Meanwhile, our team also transitioned and we welcome two new team members, Jordan Chapman and Ariana Satina. We are so grateful to have their talents here at NWBC. We are so proud to share that all through this change, the council remained active and engaged. We held public meetings, roundtables, participated in the SBA's inaugural Women's Summit, and highlighted the council's incredible work in a host of interviews. With the assistance of our new communication specialists, we also revived our monthly newsletters and robust social media engagement, strengthening the council's voice every day. This year, we welcomed five new council members to work alongside our incredible council member, Maria Rios, who is president and CEO of Nation Waste. These new council members include Jamie Gloche, co-director of Native Women Lead, Roberta McCullough, board chair of the Association of Women's Business Centers and senior vice president of operations for Institute Capital, Selena Rogers Dickerson, founder and CEO of SARCOR LLC and Celine LLC. Dr. Shakina Williams, executive director of the Center of Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership and Black Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership at Babson College. And we welcome back Pamela Prince Eason, CEO of the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. The goal of today's meeting is to review and vote upon policy recommendations of our 2020 annual report. These policy recommendations are the result of public engagement that I previously highlighted, numerous meetings and conversations, expert input, and a myriad of experiences of our esteemed council members. While NWBC has had a busy year, so has the Biden-Harris administration and in particular, the U.S. Small Business Administration. Today, we will hear from the senior advisor to the administrator, Deirdre Henry Spires. Deirdre will share the amazing work that the SBA has pursued and the many advancements that directly support and impact women business owners. We are excited to continue our partnership as we work together on behalf of Women Business Enterprise. For those of you who may be new to NWBC, I'd like to give a little background and context. My role as the executive director and DFO is to serve the council and to serve as a liaison between the council and the SBA. NWBC is a nonpartisan federal advisory council housed within the US Small Business Administration that provides advice and counsel to the president, Congress, and the SBA administrator on issues of importance to women business owners. Notably, there are about a thousand advisory committees like NWBC with more than 60,000 members that advise the president and the executive branch on a myriad of issues as private citizens. The council and staff are committed to providing a more inclusive platform where women entrepreneurs across the country from all walks of life can feel heard, supported, and connected to key decision makers in our nation our nation's capital. We continue to work toward the goal of improving the state of women business enterprise and helping strengthen the ecosystems and communities in which women small business owners operate and serve. As you all know, today's meeting is public. It was appropriately noticed in the Federal Register. Please also note that copies of all meeting materials and public comments prior to this meeting and here today will be made available for the public inspection. We will also prepare the minutes of today's meeting and make them available to the public within 90 calendar days. The minutes of our prior public meetings are available on our website, nwbc.gov. 
In addition to receiving critical updates from SBA leadership, the purpose of today's meeting is to share the culmination of the council's deliberations and work over the past year. The council's three active subcommittees, the Access to Capital and Opportunity, Rural Women's Entrepreneurship, and Women in STEM will present the policy recommendations of their subcommittees to be voted upon by the full council. We've also scheduled some time to provide uh, for public comment and questions of the council. We will read some of the public comments submitted prior to today's meeting. With that, I will now call roll. I ask all the council members to please respond by voice. Jamie Glochet. Present. Maria Rios. Maria Rios. Today, this is uh, Pamela Prince Eason. I can confirm for you that Maria's on. She must have a connection issue. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, Council member <laughs> Pamela Prince Eason. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were thanking me. <laughs> no. The present. I apologize. It's okay. Selena Rogers Dickerson. Here. Dr. Shakina Williams. I do believe Dr. Williams will be joining us a little later. Roberta McCullough. Present. Thank you all. A quorum has been established. I am now honored to introduce Deirdre Henry Spire, Senior Advisor to the Administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration. As Senior Advisor, Ms. Henry Spires is tasked with improving and enhancing the efficiency of COVID programs from application to award. As such, she works closely with the Administrator, the White House, Capitol Hill, and stakeholders to ensure that the relief needed by small businesses across the country is made available and accessible. Ms. Henry Spires is a top advocacy and policy strategist and a former professional staff member for human services and income security for the Senate Committee on Finance. As a former member of the committee's health team, she is credited as one of the architects of the Affordable Care Act. As well, Ms. Henry Spires is credited with shepherding the expansion of unemployment benefits and work supports during the Great Recession of 2008 and providing job creation policy and income security guidance and expertise for the American Recovery and Inve Reinvestment Act of 2009, the Jobs Creation Act of 2010, the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012, and the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2012. After leaving the Hill in 2014, Ms. Henry Spire served as the CEO of the Dalton Daily Group for Children and Families, a Maryland-based nonprofit. Ms. Henry Spires holds a BS in Health Policy and Administration from the Pennsylvania State University, a Certificate in Delivery System Reform from the Harvard John F. Kennedy School of Government, and was a Brookings Institute Fellow. She is currently a lecturer in public policy and health policy for the University of Texas Archer Center here in Washington, DC. Council members and guests, please welcome Senior Advisor Deirdre Henry Spires. Deirdre. making sure I'm unmuted. I was saying thank you so much, Tanae, for your gracious introduction, for inviting me today to be able to bring uh, words from the administrator, but also to the entire council. The work you do is so important. And to members of the public for taking time out of your busy day to tune in, be a part of your government and be a part of making a difference uh, for women entrepreneurs and by in, in doing so, making a difference in your communities. I am thrilled to be here. Uh, you have hit on subjects that are near and dear to my heart, both professionally and personally. Um, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, 
as a, a person who likes to see communities uh, supported with the biggest and best ideas, I know women are at the forefront of innovation, inspiration, and uh, the work of small businesses. That said, let me bring you greetings first from Administrator Isabella Casillas Guzman. She is committed to women's business ownership. This commitment is reflected in her ongoing investment and emphasis on the work of the Office of Women's Business Ownership, affectionately known as OVO, uh, in the halls of the SBA. Fiscal year 2022 was a remarkable, I'm saying was what's already transpired and what is burgeoning. So it has been and will continue to be a remarkable year for OBO and the Women's Business Center program. The WBC network has expanded to 146 women's business centers. We just need to take a moment and think about what that means. What that means, in fact, is that there is now a women's business center in every state. Our new women's business center in Alaska is the first in almost two decades. While we celebrate the expansion uh, in the states, we're also pleased with our work in the territories territories and other states. For example, in response to the challenges on the island of Puerto Rico, uh, we expanded the number of centers from one to three, making sure the island has the resources it needs to build women-owned businesses and strengthen its economy. That's a snapshot on the work we're doing in states for women in business, but also the work of the entire SBA around disaster recovery and making sure that members of the community are able to help in rebuilding the communities in which they live. I take a moment to highlight that because we're in the middle of hurricane season. And so as we look at what's going on with flooding and other issues throughout the United States, we want to build on what we've learned as one of the disaster recovery agencies at the SBA with a special highlight on how those disasters impact women business owners and how they can better be a part of the solutions when it comes time to rebuild the community. We have reaffirmed at the SBA our commitment to minority serving institutions, doubling the number of centers that operate in partnership with historically Black and Hispanic colleges and universities. Uh, we're particularly proud of that moment. Uh, notably, we hosted the inaugural Women's Business Summit that reached more than 20,000 stakeholders. Obo did a fantastic job leading the department at that summit. And we were so proud then, and we continue to be proud. We anticipate the upcoming year to be just as productive Obo will host the second annual Women's Business Summit. Uh, we're not ever going to let a good thing go. So look for part two from that summit. And programmatically, uh, they will be focused on increasing the number of women who do business with the federal government um, and also increase awareness of successful strategies that enhance women's access to capital, especially venture capital, and build the capacity of women's focused entrepreneurial organizations. This is a whole of SBA approach. It's OBO working in conjunction with our offices of uh, capital access to capital. It's uh, in conjunction with our office of innovation and investment uh, in conjunction with the front office of the administrator. We are always looking on how we can bring a whole of SBA approach to any sector of our small business community. Uh, one of the things that we'll also be focused on in the coming year is our continued conversation around childcare, not only from a, uh, uh, an early childhood development place, but from a work support space, but also for our business owners that are in the childcare sector. Many women come to childcare and wellness care as a passion with a commitment to early childhood development and find themselves in the middle of business ownership around their passion. 
We want to help their businesses succeed, and we are looking for innovations and in ways we can use SBA products to support this really important part of our sector. We know that people can't return to work. We learned this during the COVID pandemic, that people cannot return to work without proper child care, and that we also owe it to the next generation of entrepreneurs to give them the best and earliest start in life. The Office of Women's Business Ownership's efforts have incorporated many of the policy recommendations of, of this body, of the NWBC, reflecting our strong partnership and the impact of the work that you do. I want to just close by saying, please stay encouraged. Please continue to dig into the tough issues and ask the hard questions. Be encouraged in your bipartisan nature and your ability to speak on a plethora of issues in a multitude of communities and bring back good information to your federal and state partners. Your work is meaningful, impactful, and necessary. We see you at the SBA. We appreciate you. And I am deeply inspired by you. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. And also thank you on behalf of the administrator. Keep up the good work. With that, I turn it back over to you so that you can continue with this meeting. We look forward to receiving your recommendations recommendations. Thank you so much, Deirdre. That was, um, we love that inspirational moment and all of the work that you're doing. Um, thank you for your time and your support of the nation's uh, National Women's Business Council. We're grateful for your continued focus and commitment to women business owners. Thank you for highlighting the disaster um, relief um, efforts that the SBA continues to make. Uh, thank you for talking about the collaborations. And we are excited about next year's summit. We want to collaborate with you. So we look forward to more and more. Thank you so much. With that, everyone, we will now, as Deirdre said, move on to the business at hand, the policy recommendations. I would now like to introduce council member, Jamie Gloche, co-founder and co-director of Native Women Lead. She will present the policy recommendations for the Access to Capital and Opportunity Subcommittee. Council member Gloche. Thank you, Executive Director Dolphin. As I get started, I'd like to recognize my fellow council members, Maria Rios, Roberta McCullough, Selena Rogers Dickerson, and Pam Prince Easton, Easton, sorry. Uh, I'm thrilled to serve on the National Women's Business Council representing the important needs of my community, the important needs of all women, women of color, and Native American women small business owners. It has been a pleasure having this opportunity to dive deeply into the issues impacting women entrepreneurs across the country, particularly those related to access to capital. I'd also like to recognize How Women Lead for sharing important perspectives on women's inclusion in venture capital and how to better support women fund managers, prospective women investors, as well as increased investments in more women-owned startups and businesses. With that in mind, the Access to Capital and Opportunity Subcommittee today presents policy recommendations related to the following several areas. First, Showcase the policy wins for women in business and work toward systemic change. But first, just found her creating a financing bridge to a capital stack and promote women-owned small business growth. Define micro-businesses and reconsider debt relief options for micro and small women-owned enterprises impacted by global disruptions. Advance a grow advance and grow a community of women investing in women-owned businesses. Continue to strengthen and work toward parity for the women-owned small businesses and economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses federal contracting program. Fund, expand, and tailor federal financial capability resources for women small business owners. And provide additional relief for women-owned small business owners impacted by ongoing supply chain disruptions and workforce availability issues. The first showcase the policy wins for women in business 
and work towards systemic change. The National Women's Business Council recommends that the White House, the White House Gender Policy Council, should develop a list of recent policy wins for women, including policy changes which show promise of advancing for advancing women's business enterprise. For example, changes aimed at helping close the, the entrepreneurial development, financing, and federal contracting gender gap. Please provide comments, if any. Okay. All right, thank you. Let's continue to the next recommendation. But first, just funder. Creating a financing bridge to a capital stack and promote women-owned small business growth. The council encourages Congress and the SBA to continue improving accessibility to all SBA lending programs by closely examining the needs and lived experiences of startup and scale-up women-owned small businesses ensuring there are no training prerequisites for funding and reassessing lending criteria, product affordability, and innovative repayment flexibilities. Please provide comments, if any. Okay, thank you. We will continue to the next recommendation. Define micro business and reconsider debt relief options for micro and small women owned enterprises impacted by global disruptions. The National Women's Business Council recommends that Congress should develop and provide a uniform definition for a micro business. Additionally, Congress and the SBA should reconsider expanding debt relief options for certain 7A, 504, and micro loan borrowers prioritizing the needs of economically disadvantaged micro and small business borrowers in industries with significant female participa participation, particularly those severely impacted by pandemic related global supply chain issues or other major global economic disruptions. We welcome comments and we ask you all to provide comments if any. All right, thank you. Let's continue to the next recommendation. Advance and grow a community of women investing in women-owned businesses. The council recommends that the administration provide grants to fund the creation of new firms or to boost recently established VC firms, emphasizing those with under 50 million and with less than three years of operation. Please provide comments, if any. Thank you. Let's continue to the next recommendation. The council recommends that Congress should hold a hearing to explore best practices and viable policy changes, which may help incentivize traditional finance, financial institutions and VC firms to increase the representation of women fund managers and actual investments in diverse women owned businesses. Please provide comments. Thank you. I will continue to the next recommendation. Continue to strengthen and work towards parity for the women-owned small businesses and economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses federal contracting program. The National Women's Business Council lauds the administration's focus to increase federal contracting opportunities for more women and minority small business owners and encourages the SBA to continue examining viable and effective methods to improve the tracking and public sharing of disaggregated data on both federal women-owned prime contracting and women-owned small businesses and economically disadvantaged women-owned small business awards. Please provide comments.
Okay, the next recommendation is the National Women Business Council supports SBA's continued efforts to streamline and reduce wait times on women-owned small business certification and encourages it to expand its outreach and education efforts on the women-owned small business and economic, economically disadvantaged women-owned small business certification process and resources, prioritizing women business owners in economically disadvantaged communities. Additionally, to ensure streamlining and improve response, the council respectfully encourages Congress to identify an appropriate level of funding for the program. Please provide comments. Thank you. Let's continue to the next recommendation. The National Women's Business Council encourages Congress and the SBA to consider enhancing current efforts underway to improve contracting officers, the federal acquisition community training, so they are more knowledgeable and empowered to leverage women-owned small businesses and economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses, um, set aside and sole source awards. Please, please provide comments. All right, we'll proceed to the next recommendation. The National Women's Business Council urges the SBA to continue to work with federal agencies and the National Economic Council to identify a higher women-owned small business and economically disadvantaged women-owned small business spending goal above the current 5% goal. For example, 7% or higher. Please provide comments, if any. Okay, let's continue to the next recommendation. The council recommends that Congress should consider implementing a federal flow down requirement for all federal acquisition needs, particularly for procurement opportunities connected to the implementation of the 2021 bipartisan infrastructure law. Please provide comments. Thank you. We will continue to the next recommendation. Funding, expanding, and tailoring federal financial capability resources for women-owned small business owners. Congress and or the SBA should provide dedicated financial literacy capability funding for women small business owners so that they are better informed and empowered to skill up on maximizing cash flow to support their op operations. For example, financial business capability grants would at a minimum focus on cash flow management, creating a business plan, hiring a new employee, and succession planning. Please provide comments if any. Thank you. We will continue to the next recommendation. Provide additional relief for women-owned small businesses impacted by ongoing supply chain disruptions and workforce availability issues. Congress should consider viable options for expanding tax relief for small business owners severely impacted by global supply chain disruptions and workforce availability issues, emphasizing relief for businesses and industries with a significant level of participation by women and minorities. Please provide comments. Thank you so much for your attention. That concludes the Access to Capital Opportunity Subcommittee's policy recommendations. And I will turn it over to Tanae Dolphin. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gloshe. Um, so if there are no additional comments, I will take the subcommittee's recommendation as a motion. Do I have a second on the motion? This is Councilmember Pamela Prince-Eason, I second. Thank you. I will now call for a vote 
on the subcommittee's recommendations. Unblock. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The yeas have it and the access to capital and opportunity policy recommendations have been adopted as the full council. Thank you. We will now go to uh, the next subcommittee. I would like to introduce council member Selena Rogers Dickerson, founder and CEO of SARCOR LLC and Celine LLC. Council member Rogers Dickerson serves on the Women in STEM subcommittee. Council member Rogers Dickerson. Good afternoon. Thank you, Executive Director Dolphin. Before I begin, I'd like to recognize Roberta McCullough, who also serves on this committee with me. We have spent a great deal of time reviewing the research and deliberating on what recommendations to bring forth to present in this year's annual meeting or annual report. We would like to acknowledge Jane Muir, whose research in women and academic innovation greatly informed our subcommittee deliberations. I especially appreciate that as a businesswoman in the AEC industry, which is architecture, construction, and engineering, working towards ensuring fair access to business development and contracting opportunities, it means a lot. The Women in STEM subcommittee offers policy recommendations related to the following areas women in academic innovation, high yield and high growth fields with low levels of women-owned representation and the STEM pipeline. NWBC recommends that the White House should suggest that universities successfully implement a diversity and inclusion plan as a requirement to obtaining federal research grants. Council members, please provide any comments if you have some. With no comments, thank you. Our next recommendation. NWBC recommends that Congress should amend the women, the proposed women and minorities in STEM Booster Act of 2021 to include an entrepreneurial focus and training on making STEM products to the market, taking STEM products to the market. Council members, if you have any comments, please do so now. Thank you. Our next recommendation, the NWBC recommends that the SBA should incentivize Women's Business Center, WBE, WBC grantees to partner with local universities and tech transfer offices to provide member mentorship, idea sharing on best practices and opportunities for real world work experience and application of insights. Council members, please feel free to comment at this time. Thank you. The next recommendation is in regards to high yield, high growth fields with low levels of women owned representation. At the White House level, bipartisan infrastructure law implementation should improvise, em emphasize and prioritize women and women of, women of color to ensure fair access to actual contracting opportunities, awards that focus outreach, education, and data collection. Please provide any comments at this time. Thank you. The next recommendation. Congress should expand the definition of accelerator to provide women and include architecture, engineering, and construction, AEC industries, and proposed legislation. For example, in, this, in the SOAR Act. Council members, if you have any comments, please so speak so at this time. Thank you. For the next recommendation, NWBC should commission research focusing on both high yield, STEM and high growth industry, currently AEC, as well as industries with over representation of women, yet 
under valuation, such as health care. Council members, please comment on this time. For our next recommendation, the STEM pipeline. Congress should ensure women entrepreneurs and workers re-entering the labor force have fair access to training and targeted assistance opportunities, STEM Restart Act, for example. This training and assistance should be delivered as part of a collaboration between academia, entrepreneurial ecosystem builders, and small businesses. Council member, please speak if you have any comments regarding this policy recommendation. Thank you. For the next recommendation, Congress should invest in STEM education and career outreach at the primary and secondary education levels through legislation such as HR 5893, 21st Century STEM for Girls and Underrepresented Minorities Act, as well as HR 7251, getting involved in researching, learning, and studying of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics act, or the Girls STEM Act. Legislation with a STEM educational outreach component should integrate entrepreneur education and have a robust definition of STEM that also includes the AEC industries. Council members, please provide any comments that you may have at this time. Next recommendation. SBA should encourage SCORE to bolster its online mentorship and ensure that mentor opportunities are not limited geographically and cut across industries. WBCs should provide or enhance complementary support services, leveraging other, other their networks and other SBA partners, including community navigators to, to deliver tailored and industry specific support to diverse women entrepreneurs. SBA could support these initiatives by creating additional industry specific resources in the Accents platform. Council members, please provide any comments at this time. Thank you. That it concludes the Women in STEM Subcommittee's policy recommendation. Thank you, Council Member Rogers Dickerson. If there are no additional comments, I will take the subcommittee's recommendation as a motion. Do I have a second on the motion? This is Roberta McCullough. I will second that. Thank you. I will now call for a vote on the subcommittee's recommendations and block. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The yeas have it and the women in STEM policy recommendations have been adopted as the full council. Thank you. Now we are going to have Dr. Shakina Williams. Dr. Williams, are you available before I introduce? Yes, I am. Awesome. Listen, our council members are extremely busy and they are multitasking even in the moment. <laughs> So executive direct, she's the executive director of Well and Well at Babson College, and she will present the policy recommendations on behalf of the Rural Women's Entrepreneurship Subcommittee. Council member, Dr. Williams. Thank you so much for that introduction. I proudly serve on the NWBC's Women's Rural Entrepreneurship Subcommittee alongside my fellow council member, Jamie Gos Gache. It is my pleasure to present the fiscal year 2020 policy recommendations for this subcommittee before the full council for a vote. The Rural Women's Entrepreneurship Subcommittee offers, offers policy recommendations within these overarching focus areas. Persistent barriers to rural, rural women's entrepreneurship, lack of affordable childcare and equitable paid family leave, 
gain fresh insights on rural ecosystems, workforce development issues, local governance, and capacity issues impacting rural and tribal women entrepreneurs. Empowering rural women entrepreneurs to thrive in, in tomorrow's global economy today. Enhance federal support and coordinate the assess accessible resources for rural women entrepreneurs. Down to the roots, leveraging community-based supports to bolster rural women entrepreneurs. Now let's dive right into the full policy recommendation. The pers persistent barriers to rural women's entrepreneurship, lack of affordable childcare and equ equitable paid family medical leave. The council recommends that the White House should identify the most appropriate federal agencies to further enhance outreach and education to small businesses on national PFML solutions. Additionally, the council respectively encourage Congress to hold new hearings to explore how a national PFMLA solution can potentially make the U.S. small business more competitive at home and abroad. Please provide comments, if any. I don't know if you can hear me. I think you can go to the next, the next okay. recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the next recommendation, the White House should develop a plan of action which would further empower the SBA to improve and expand entrepreneurial development resources and affordable financing for the hardest hit, hardest hit child care and care economy business businesses, particularly in the rural rural tribal and other underserved communities. There any comments? Okay, I'll go to the next recommendation. Gain fresh insights on rural ecosystems, workforce development issues, local governance and capacity issues impacting rural and tribal women entrepreneurs. NWBC should co conduct a, la a landscape analysis in fiscal year 2023 to better assess the effectiveness of current entrepreneurial ecosystems, technical assistant capacity, local government issues, and the brain drain impacting rural WSBs, EBWSB growth. The study should also identify effective program models to improve engagement of women entrepreneurs in tribal and immigrant communities. Please provide any comments, if any. All right, I will go to the next recommendation. Empowering rural women entrepreneurs to thrive in today's global economy today. The administration and or the SBA should encourage WBCs, universities, and local incubators and accelerators to improve and expand outreach, mentoring, and training so that the increased numbers of diverse rural women entrepreneurs are strongly positioned to take advantage of tomorrow's tech and green market opportunities. Any comments? Thank you. I'll go to the next recommendation. To provide supplemental funding for WBCs, partnering with the Workforce Opportunity for Rural Communities grantees. To assist women-owned businesses identify skilled rural workers, including those trained to fill tech and green jobs. There's no comments. I will go to the next recommendation. Enhance federal support and coordinate accessible resources for rural women entrepreneurs. The White House should continue to collab continue its collaborative work with the USDA and encourage strategic alliance with the Rural Prosperity Council and Rural Partner Network to pr prioritize increased outreach and support for rural and women business owners. Additionally, it should further help disseminate best practices on outreach, 
available wraparound services and federal entrepreneurial development resources and funding opportunities. If there's no comment, I will go to the next recommendation. Down to the roots, leveraging community-based support to bolster rural women entrepreneurs. The council recommends that the SBA's Office of Women's Business Ownership should continue supporting WBCs to help them en enhance coordination with the PTACs and other small business resource partners to better assist rural women business owners interest in pursuing federal contract opportunities, including, including by leveraging referrals and instituting robust benchmarks and metrics. There's no comment. I will do the last recommendation. The council recommends that the SBA should continue monitoring community navigators hub and spoke organizations to in, to ensure active outreach to and engagement of women entrepreneurs, instituting, instituting robust benchmarks and clear metrics for these efforts. There's no comment. I, I would like to thank you and conclude the Women's Rural Entrepreneurship Subcommittee's policy recommendations. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. Following no additional comments, I will take the subcommittee's recommendations as a motion. Do I have a second on the motion? I second Council Member Maria Rios. Thank you, Council Member Rios. Uh, I will now call for a vote on the subcommittee's recommendations and block. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The yeas have it. And the committee, the rural committee's policy recommendations have been adopted as the full council. Now we will have our public comments, comments presented by council member Roberto McCullough board chair of the Association of Women's Business Centers and senior vice president of operations for Institute Capital, a tireless advocate for women and a dedicated council member. You should also note that AWBC will be hosting their annual conference next week. So this council member is very busy. Council member McCullough. Thank you so much, Executive Director Dolphin for that introduction. And thank you, Ms. Henry Spires, and council members for all the great information and policy recommendations shared during today's public meeting. Now, we will share comments from some members of the public who have taken the time to submit their thoughts and questions. The first question comes from Ms. Lindora Baker. She asks, how do you become a member of the NWBC? Thank you, thank you Lindora. That is a great question. National Women's Business Council members are appointed on the, on, based on recommendations from the president, members of Congress, the SBA administrator, or by current council members and staff. They are seasoned executives, excuse me, they are seasoned entrepreneurs and dedicated women's business enterprise. Excuse me one second. Enterprise advocates recognized for adding value to our country and society and are located from a variety of locations from Texas to Massachusetts. We also received a comment from Susan Aguirre. Suzanne says, says that she's attending to learn more and keep up to date on the NWBC information. Thank you, Suzanne. And I apologize if I miscorrected, uh, pronounce your last name. We invite you to stay engaged with NWBC by subscribing to receive updates from our council at www.nwbc.gov. We urge you to join the conversation via our social channels, including Twitter at NWBC and on Instagram at NWBCGOV. You can also find us, of course, on LinkedIn and Facebook. Our final comment is from Thomas uh, Tetonet. He shares, looking forward to learning more about your organization and if it will be something I can refer to my clients for their business growth and involvement. 
Thank you for sharing the comments with us, Thomas. It provides us with fantastic opportunity to clarify our, our own work and share more about work being done by others. While we are not a programmatic officer per se, our, miss, our mission does involve uh, keeping tabs on national women's business enterprise issues, programs, resources, and policy trends. To get a general overview of resources that support women's entrepreneurship, be sure to check out the Resiliency Resources section of our 2021 annual report. This section provides a thorough catalog of resources that can be used, be of use to your clients. We would also recommend women entrepreneurs at any stage of their entrepreneurial development consider checking out SBA's learning platform, along with other women's business ownership focused uh, ascent platform. When it comes to community level support, women's business, women business owners cannot go wrong by connecting with their local women's business center, visiting the uh, nearest small business development center, or by considering mentoring opportunities with the SCORE program. Well, thank you again to all the members of the public who have joined us today for today's public meeting and submitted comments. Back over to you, Direct Executive Director Dalton. Thank you, Councilmember McCullough. And thanks to everyone who took time to send your comments and questions. This concludes our public meeting. Thank you to the members of this council for your advocacy efforts on behalf of women entrepreneurs. Thank you, Ms. Henry Spires and the SBA for your continued commitment to women business owners. Thank you guests for attending today's meeting. Members of the public, please stay connected to NWBC via our website, newsletter, and social media channels. This meeting is adjourned.